Hey everybody, this is Glattercat and it's time to play. We're back in Satisfactory. If you haven't been keeping up with the series, we're currently working on automating the automated wiring. One of the space elevator objectives in the top right of the screen. We just, a couple episodes ago, completed the versatile frameworks. Those are being loaded in storage right now. I'm sure we probably already have the 500 we need for the... Um, space elevator but we're storing up a whole bunch more right now we need to take our copper ingots we just brought into the factory and start making wire and cable so let's do it yeah eight on each side and that gets us two belts of 240 so eight on each side there's one That's our eight. This is all going to be copper wire. I'll try the control C, control V thing, but it's a little slower for me. Cool. Turn off the light and let's run our input belt straight down the middle. Again, this is going to be 240 copper ingots. As I stand in front of the port and held the control key, these will line up pretty good. Now we've got all our wire. We got two belts of, or we're going to have two belts of, um, 240 wire. Ooh, we could come straight. No, we can't on that one. I was going to say, it'd be nice to have the inputs back on this side and flowing down as we do the cable. So how we want to do this, what we want to do, hmm, <laughs> we need to produce wire, which we're doing now. Some of that wire needs to be turned into cable and some of that wire needs to go to um, build stators, which we're going to do up on the next floor. If for some reason the cable backs up, I would like all that wire to be used for stators and vice versa. If the stators were backed up, I'd like the wire to be used for all for cable. So what that means I need to do is I think I need to split both of these output belts something there's some kind of balancer right here that I for a balancer type thing I need to do let's uh get our output belts going down this way they kind of have to and then yeah I gotta think about how I want to how I can do this so that I don't have like half of this line overflowing with the other half kind of starved out if that makes any sense I'd love to go right down the middle Alright, I think that line's good. Let's do the other one. Alright, those all look connected. And now we gotta do something clever. We can't merge these together because they both have 240 each. But I need to... Let's somehow... Let's think that through for a second. We're gonna do cable here 
cable production. That's going to bring us down to, um, we'll take two wire and we'll, that'll get us down to one cable for every two wire. But again, I want it so I can overflow these. I think what I want to do is do a splitter. Uh, I'm going to experiment here. It may not work out. Split that guy. This is a little bit of extra sticking out we don't need. Then I want... A merger. <laughs> Basically, I want to take half of this line and say, go do cable with it. And if there's overflow, go continue on and feed the stator production on the floor above. I want to do the exact same thing with that line. Take half of it, go to cable production. So, and the rest goes up. So I think I need a merger here. This is a little goofy. Bear with me. I don't know if this is going to work. The way I intend. That's a splitter. This is going to be a merger. Come in straight towards us. Boom. So this is half of that copper wire or all of it if that's backed up. And if I split here. Maybe overkill. May not be doing what I think it's going to do or serve the purpose I think it's going to serve. We're going to split this one. But I want to do it just to do it. Okay. Boom. Okay, here's half of that line. Boom. And that line is going to go up way out here to the next floor. We might have room to... We need to combine the, what, the copper wire with, what is that for staters? I've forgotten what the recipe is. Oh, yeah. Steel pipes and the wire. All right, yeah, we're going to do that on the next floor up. Could hug the ceiling if we wanted to. Not necessary. We could, you know, have a conveyor lift going up. Uh, maybe it is necessary, actually. I'll show you, I'll show you why. Show you why that's going to come in handy. Let's do conveyor lift five. I think it'll clip on, right? Yeah, that's going to be better for us. Because the other half of this belt needs to come over this way. Okay, so now what we would want to do, I think, is actually have two lines, two lines of cable production that can each handle a belt of 240 wire coming in. Is that right? That would give us the maximum cable. This is overkill. I don't think we need to do this. So theoretically, that could be 240. Yeah, this was backed up. Stator production was backed up. This belt coming off of this splitter would be 240. So let's do two lines. This is a little goofy what I'm doing here, but I'm going to do it. Basically, we're going to do cable production 
seeming a little silly. Seeming 240 coming off of this belt. Cables. We take 60 per minute. So all I need is four for these, right? some extra room and do four over here. We'll see how this all shakes up here in a second. Basically, I'm setting up cable production as if we were using all of the wire. And none of that wire was being used for faders. This will share a common output belt because 240 wire here and 240 wire here will give us one output belt of um, 240 cable if we needed to. We'll never need this. Kind of doing it just to do it. I have no good explanation for it. Guess just to exercise the muscles of building something that's a little more scalable. But I don't think it's going to apply in this case. It can't hurt either. All right, control, boom. Man, that took a while. Okay, output belt. We can, I guess. Seem to be working on this side of the factory this time. Let's, um, I guess we'll stick with that. Output belt down the middle. Got lots of room. Uh, and I need to do this with, um, with the mergers here, so let's see. E, E, E. Boom. Now we need to run the other input belt. Uh, let's go around this way and do it. I'm getting a little low on steel beams, but we're at the steel factory. So I'm going to pull off of this splitter. idea between these um, splitters and mergers on the copper wire is just that if one set of production was backed up either the stator production which we're going to do or the cable production then the rest of the wire would flow to the other side that's not backed up in theory but I don't think we're going to have those kind of problems Cable goes up. I kind of want to move this off of here. I guess we'll go straight through. Not crazy about putting these ports right on the seam here between two 
foundations, but I guess it doesn't really matter. We could go up and run it up in the ceiling. We have that one kind of on the ground. Let's, uh, we'll do this one along the bottom. All right. There it is. It's cable. <laughs> we, have, we have one little problem. One little problem. I think I ran the outputs to the other side, didn't I? For the wire. The wire going to go up. Yeah, the wire is going to go up. Let's do the same. Let's let's reverse this. My bad. My bad. The mergers can stay, but we're going to run that output up the other side. We have both the inputs for the stators on the same side. So this can go. Not a big deal. Just have to reverse the belts in the middle. Oh no, we actually have to move all the, um, yeah, we have to move all of these guys too. Shoot. All right. I'll be right back. I'm going to rebelt this so that our output goes in the other direction. All right. That's been rebelted. I guess we'll take this output and run up to the roof the same way. Can I, let's see, how could I do that? I need it right in the middle, right? And going... I that I can't see which direction. All right, that one, we want it... Yeah, like that. Line up here. In that way, and out. To the top. Nugget we don't need. Alright. Port. Gonna run right through our power line, but we'll see. Might be just fine. Boiler alert. It's gonna be just fine. Because <laughs> I don't want to mess with it. Uh, that is not the correct lift, apparently. Fine. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. I'm not crazy about that wire going through there, but it's not horrible. Did to put uh, one of these. We do it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Gonna put these connectors a little bit closer so that wire doesn't sag down quite as much. Um, let's do it. Easy. Ah, maybe it sags exactly the same amount. Oh well. Good enough. We have cable. I think we have cable up there. Yeah, cable. Not crazy about how these are oriented, but we'll keep them since they're both consistent. Cable going up, wire going up. We need to go up. Conveniently, there's a stairway right here. Next up, next up is going to be taters, right? Taters. Let's look at the recipes one more time here and see where we're at. Here's, oops. Automated wiring. Cable is going to go up one more floor. Unless we make them right here. So we're going to get maximum, maximum, maximum we would have ever is 240 cable, right? We'll probably never have that. But if we did, we would need what are these? Uh, let's put down an assembler and just see what the recipe looks like in terms of per minute. Okay. 
this I'm looking at automated wiring first we can take oh man yeah we can take 50 cable per minute so it's only going to be five of these we can yeah we can probably do the automated wiring on the same floor that we're doing the staters uh let's take a look at the staters are they made in the same thing i think they are right this takes 40 wire per minute so just six of these and we need to go bring steel pipes up six of these oh man so slow five per minute staters oh boy fortunately we only need one of these per automated wiring so we're getting 240 four comes up so six six assemblers for the staters i just do those in one big row right all right and we need to bring up the pipes that's what's first um Let's see what these are real quick so we can lay out the factory. I've already forgotten. Okay, that's our cable. That's needed last, right? Cable. Yeah, that's needed after the, the stators. So let's do the stator stuff over here. This side. We need to bring up those steel pipes let's see if we can do that and where are good places one two three four i've got four open foundations let's go find the steel pipes and see if we can find a clear path up here uh that side is still open right yep that's all open Side has somebody in the second one, right? Or the third. The one, two, three, four. No, there's still four open there. These are pipes. Yeah, so we okay, we've got yeah, yeah, yeah. We can come in over here. Let's do it. Or route, route our stuff up here. We could do ceiling mounts. Probably makes sense. And then I'll probably... Yeah, I'm not really making use of this cache. Don't know if we're going to export these pipes later or not i guess i'll leave this the way it is and we'll we'll kind of do what we did last time except maybe i'll run i'll run the pipes on the ceiling this time i gotta back up to see um i want this line you up Okay, there's our pipes. These are going up for staters. And I guess we can just come straight across. Or should I zigzag around? Um, I kind of feel like I should zigzag down and leave this whole ceiling nice and clean. In case we ever do something over here. We probably never will. I think I'm going to do it though. I'm going to zigzag down. Necessarily.
All right. There's our steel pipes on their way up. I need to connect the head conveyor lifts between the floors. I will do that, and then I'll be right back. All right, we're back up. We've got our pipes here. We can see them, which is nice. And we have a wire, which we can see, which is nice. Awesome. And what did we say we needed? Do we need... Let's take the recipe over here again. Short-term memory loss. Uh, we need... For staters. We can handle 40 per... We're going to build for 240. There's no way we're going to get that. So six... Yeah, six assemblers will be more than enough way more than enough six assemblers let's do them Taters. there might be alternative recipes for this too but uh i don't have them Taken, yep. Okay, power. I have it on the floor here. Let's do it. We'll check our power once this uh, factory is built, too. I think we're in great shape. We may go hunting for another set of coal deposits near water, and we could build another coal power plant. We actually have some surplus scale in our existing coal power plant if we wanted to scale that up and overclock our miners a little bit further, more than we have them overclocked. And then the other thing we do, we have that compact coal factory that is just sitting with a ton of coal in it. Straight away, the second gray building there is loaded with compacted coal. We're not hardly using it. We're using it to fuel our vehicles, but that's nothing. We could tap into some local water or even truck that out or create another um, stop on our tractor route, drop it off somewhere near water, and build another um, whole power plant. Let's look over here. I'm getting distracted. Is there water out there somewhere? There is. Somewhere there's water out there. There's a little bit right there, a little... Or no, that's rock. <laughs> There's water out here somewhere. Maybe behind that building. There is a place if we wanted to. We could truck out some of that compacted coal. Or we could tap into... There's a tiny bit of water right in front. There's our coal mine right there in the crosshairs. There is a tiny water right a bit of water right below that that we could tap into and create a power plant. We'll see. I think, like I said, right now I think we're okay. But it's something we're going to need to think about later. All right, let's route our inputs. Hopefully I'm far enough back. I think I am. One's going to go high, one's going to go low. Let's have this guy be the low guy. Right down the middle. Might not be the best place to put a support. It doesn't matter. Let's wait to do that until we have the other belt up. This one's going to go right on top. Should I clip through that thing? Let's try it and see what it's going to look like. I'll show you what I'm thinking this, but up to, and then I'll need probably one of these here. Yeah. Not sure how far that needs to go. That all nasty. Yep. All 
right, that should be nice and pretty. Let's go put a support way over here. Uh, just past this one. Oh, if we want to get clever, I guess we don't need the splitter for the last one, right? Let's see if that'll work. That look horrible. Pretty horrible. I think I'd learn my lesson, but I don't. Yeah, the placement on these, I just cannot seem to memorize. That's what I wanted. Is not going to reach. Means I need a support. splitters and we'll be almost done then we can route the belts uh, line up here as best we can Oof. all right get out of here that is that that should be staters on their way out of that yeah there's already 10 in there now we want to use these Along with the cable here to make the automated wiring. I think I'm going to loop the output of this belt up and around. Let's do that. Flashlight. I have these guys come back over to the same side with the other inputs. This is where it gets screwy because the holding down the control key wants to line up with the inputs, not the outputs. But that's kind of a drag. We'll get it. Oh, now it'll snap. As long as we're close, it'll snap. Interesting. Still more to learn, more for me to learn. Ins and outs is satisfactory. There's our few staters. Wish there were more. These are kind of slow to produce. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. This guy can get out of our way. Now we talked about, at the beginning of the episode, about three hours ago, I mentioned I want to save off staters as well. So I want some of these to be available for export. So not all used for construction. Do I want that to be the overflow or do I want it half? This is so goofy. Watch this. If I pick this up. Oh, no, that was fine. I guess that was fine. Okay, going to make his way through. Yeah, the animations are a little weird on the belts. Looks like mergers are stuck when they're not. It drives me a little crazy. I'll show it again. See how there's a bunch of staters here and there's nothing on this belt. And it's like, hey, that merger's clogged. That's clogged till I just pull one out of here. Or here. <laughs> how come that's not working? <laughs> See here. See, there it goes. Makes no sense. I don't like it. Anyway, that's the way it is. Yeah, so we want to save off some of these staters. Uh, I need to think about that right now. We want half going into storage so I can export them right away. Or do I want just the overflows? I think I want half of these right away going into storage, believe it or not. I think, yeah, I want to have these on hand. So that means... I need to feed those into a 
splitter. Maybe... Maybe right here, because I'm trying to think of the input belt. I think we're going to have this come around into a splitter. The ones going into storage are going to continue on that way and find their way... Maybe into a storage array on this floor. Then the ones that we're going to use for automated wiring are going to make their way straight down there. The cable is just 100% made for automated wiring. I'm not looking to export that. That'll jump up. or We'll change this guy to drop off one level higher. It'll come up on the second level. And that'll be the second level input. And then... We'll do our assemblers here. I think we said we only need like four of them. Let me copy one of those. I'm going to put down four and then we'll check the recipe. I think it's just four that we need. Uh, it's five, right? Assuming we had 240 cable, which we never probably will. I believe these guys can take 50. Yeah, 50 cable per minute. So we'll scale it to this. Now it will ever use it. Could take the time and come up with the perfect ratios, but not really interested in doing that. This will do the trick for us. Okay, now we said we we're going to split stators. Let's put a splitter right here. In the middle. Here's all our stators for automated wiring. Exactly in the middle, are we? That's fine. One. I'm gonna try to snap these guys in. If I get close, will you let me? No, it wants to snap to this guy over here. Alright. Have to eyeball it. Cable's going to come up a little bit higher. Bring it in higher. Ah, uh, that's even better. I always want to do it one further out. I guess that's dead center. Remember that. said that one doesn't actually need the splitter the last one let's try to get in the habit of not doing it when we don't need it
All right, belts. Are you gonna work? Need to do power yet? It's a big deal. Automated framework or automated wiring. We have a ton of this to make. Sixty-one thousand units, if not more. If I counted correctly. That's an easy belt to forget. Okay. Did I power these? No, not yet. Imagine you could get clever and underclock these and get more production per watt. But I'm not going to worry about that until um, we have like some huge problems with power or something that we can't resolve. All right. That is automated wiring. We need to store it and we need to store off the remaining stators somewhere. So we need two storage arrays and then we need to make these products available for export. Guess we could always come across the ceiling. But let's see. How do we want to do this? I'm just trying to figure out where we want the outputs to end up. Um, that splitter. Guess we could. In the interest of saving room, I could come out this way. These are the stators this way and then let this output of the automated wiring come up this direction as well and then run two big long storage arrays might be room for that the other option is to store way back here storage arrays going in this direction a couple of them we do need a lot of automated wiring tons Let's do, let's do that one first. thinking we just run it straight down there and then have the other one go in that direction. Let's do it. Not overthink it. We need a lot of these though. Uh, 61,000. That's like 25 to 26 industrial storage containers. <laughs> if we wanted to try and store it all. Oh uh, boy. A lot. That's a lot. I could do two rows of these somehow. Let's see. All right, I'm going to build this. I'll be right back. I think I'm going to show you what I'm going to do, and then I'll go do it. I think what I'm going to do is here. Oh, yeah, these don't actually snap together, do they? 
New. No, you gotta run a belt between them. Oh man. Yeah, they don't. Would be slow to construct. I was thinking of doing one that's like a double wide all the way down for the automated wiring. And then for the stators, just a, an array that's like one going down. Hmm. Yeah. We'll see. I'm going to do it and then I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I'm just finishing up our storage arrays. <laughs> we have a lot of storage. I'll show you in a minute. This is for the um, stators, all these storage bins. And I just need to wire these in or belt these in. Not quite done, but close. All right, we'll just make sure those make it to the far side. So that's for stators. And then over here, I've got storage for automated wiring. Looks pretty close to being the same. However, for the automated wiring, I got doubles. Doubles, doubles. So there's quite a few. 26 storage. 26 industrial storage for the automated wiring. Because like I said, I think we need 61,000 from what I can see in the wiki. Just doing the math. Um, we have a ton of storage for that. Production on the automated wiring may be potentially going to be artificially slow because we're splitting the stator supply between storing those off for export and using those to make the um, make the automated wiring. Let's just double check. Let's just see. Curiosity. These are loaded with stators. That one's got a hundred. Let's see what the um, see what the assembler at the end of the chain has in terms of stators. Thirty. Okay. Still has plenty. We'll see. That may thin out. Like I said, this line may be a little starved. We'll find out. But yeah, that's it for this one. Let's see how many we have. Automated wiring. In fact, we can grab a stack. In fact, why don't we go satisfy the space elevator here as a reward for those people who stuck through this long episode. We need a hundred of this. I'll take, I really don't need extra. So I'm just going to take the two I need a hundred automated wiring. And then I'm going to grab 500 versatile frameworks. Go see if we can get those. And eventually we need to route these down to truck stations. That may be a later episode. Or I might do it between episodes, but yeah, we need to export those. Actually, we need to export um, the versatile frameworks too, I believe. All right, let's go down. That's copper wire. This, is this us? This is us, versatile frameworks. There's our storage array. We don't need to store as many of these and we're going to grab 500 then we're going to go down into the explorer and drop them off at the space elevator and launch it and then we'll call it an episode check it out look at this oh man versatile frameworks wheat wheat all right we need 500 it's 10 stacks do i have room <laughs> uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i do let's Fill this up and then give, whoop, fill this up. And I don't want extras right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten. Take it. Can use our brand new shiny hyper tube. Is that one floor down, maybe? No, it's actually one floor up. One floor up. Let's go one floor. Let's go one floor up and take the hyper tube down. Goodness. Yeah, I just don't want hyper tubes on every floor. I'd be nice if you could hook into the same tube from multiple floors. You know what I'm saying? I don't have my blade runners on, so we're going a little bit slower. All right, I think we can just jump on in here. Okay, down we go. 
Oof. A little hard to watch. Uh, this was our test. Whoops, I just hopped into it. We're going to pull this up. <laughs> this is my little test hypertube. Sorry about that. Didn't intend to go in there. In fact, I don't need that power pole. I don't need this guy. Where's the vehicle? There we go. Straight ahead. Um, I think while we're here, I was going to put some of these plates in here. This came in handy last time we ran out. Uh, that's fine. All right, off to the space elevator. something invisible there there is a little ridge there actually oh man it feels like about two years since we last did this let's hop over we don't have to do it from the console we can do it anywhere oh man do I have the smart plating we already yeah we've already supplied it um here we go your point we're 76 what what did I do? Not grab enough? Oh man, did I miscount? Oh man, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. I'll be right back. Pretend it didn't happen. Be right back. All right. We're back as if nothing had happened. Let's jump in and do it. Boom, finally. All right, we gotta steal it. And now we can send it. Boom. I like it. it goes very cool very cool get more animation here or no awesome 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 now we have new objectives 2500 personal matrix uh 500 what are those things kind of engines right Where are you modular engines 500 of those and then adaptive control units, a hundred of these. These adaptive control units, I think, are what we need the smart wiring for. I could be wrong. Adaptive. Oh, I don't even have it unlocked, apparently, so I can't look at the recipe. Here's one of our tractors going by. We are in good shape. We just completed phase two on the space elevator. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That means a couple more tiers unlocked at the hub. Maybe next episode we'll take a look at those. And then between episodes, I will decide whether we go out for an excursion, maybe do a little hard drive hunting, um, take down some enemies, try out the new weapons that we have, the shatter rebar and the it was a shockwave novelisk and all that kind of stuff. We could kind of arm up, head out, and take it to the enemies. The other thing we could do, we have a lot of odds and ends to do too. I could do in an episode. One is I'd like to take the excess smart plating that we're producing. Because that factory is backed up and stopped. And divert all of the excess production into a um, awesome sink right now while we have a surplus of power. And then maybe underneath here, if we go underneath here, got a little door and a stairway. This is where early on, I don't know, maybe episode three or something, we set up some basic, very slow production of um, concrete or cement, I guess. 
and we're feeding this into an awesome sink. I'm thinking about just tearing this all out, actually. Let's see here. Power production's at 4,800. Plus, on top of that, we have, like, a temporary buffer of power from our biomass burners. But that production, I believe, is all coal from our coal power plant. We're consuming less than half of that. But remember, the... Um, the smart plating factory is fully stopped. Our copper factory is stopped. Our um, handcrafting materials factory is likely stopped. The screw factory is likely stopped. So once we start exporting a bunch of stuff or start utilizing materials from those factories, our power usage is going to go up. But in the meantime, might make sense to start sending more things to the awesome sink and we have a surplus for sure of that smart plating so that's another thing we might do next episode we'll see and i gotta close up the sides of some of these factories and paint them we could even do that in an episode i'm gonna go ahead and print my 10 coupons and we will call it an episode for now this is glider cat signing off and thanks so much for watching. Really, really appreciate your viewership, especially if you've stayed with the series of this long. Appreciate it. Thanks to Gladdercat patrons and channel members, as always. Um, I don't think anybody's clicked the thanks button in this series, but if you did, I would thank you for that as well. Definitely appreciate the support. Helps keep the channel alive. And I will see all of you in the next episode.